Do you have the math skills to solve this simple math word problem? Well, there's only one way to find out, and that is to try the problem, which is the following. Bob has 126 bills made up of fives and tens. The total value of all these bills is $840. How many fives does Bob have? All right, so that is the problem. Feel free to use a calculator. But if you have the answer, put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, now before I show you the answer, let's take another look at the problem. So Bob has 126 bills made up of fives and tens. Now, for those of you that don't really understand uh, US currency, I'll explain this in just one second. So uh, Bob again has 126 bills made up of fives and tens. The total value of all these bills is $840. How many fives does Bob have? All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is 84 fives. Now, if you got this right, you definitely get a happy face and an A+. Plus. Congratulations on being able to solve this nice, lovely math word problem. Now, uh, you probably didn't notice, or maybe you did, I didn't say solve the algebra word problem, okay? Because if I were to say, uh, or if I did say, uh, solve the algebra word problem. A lot of you might, you know, be intimidated by that. You're like, what are you talking about? Algebra, I don't want to do algebra. And if you were able to solve this using maybe common sense or trial and error or some other unique method, that is fantastic. Never sell yourself short when it comes to trying to solve a math problem. There's always uh, typically more than one way to solve it, but I am going to use algebra to solve this problem because algebra is just a tool, all right? And if you don't like algebra word problems, well, hopefully you're not going to uh, mind watching the solution to this problem because the algebra here is not that difficult. All right, so first things first. First, we have a lovely math word problem. And you always want to use something called the rule of three. Now, this is my rule, and uh, it's basically common sense, and that is don't do anything until you read the problem at least three times. Now, uh, even myself, you know, back in the good old days when I started learning, first started learning math, I would read a problem real quick. I'd be like, okay, I got it, and then just go off in a certain direction. Then I would be like, wait a minute, I'm confused. I think I'm doing this wrong. I would come back and read the problem again, and then be like, boy, I just wasted a bunch of time, and then go in this direction to solve the problem. So that is a very common thing that can happen when you're dealing with a math word problem, or matter of fact, any math problem. So you need to kind of build in some patience, right? So read the problem, let your brain kind of kick in, get all that information, and uh, most importantly, you need to understand the question. And the question here is, how many fives does Bob have? All right, so again, read the problem at least three times. But uh, here, we are talking about U.S. currency, okay? So just in case some of you out there don't really understand U.S. currency, I'm going to give you a quick 30-second crash course uh, on it. So what we have here is we're talking about bills. So uh, in, in not just the U.S. currency, you, uh, you know, pretty much all different currencies, uh, there is uh, paper money, right? And we describe these uh, paper money as bills. And then we have coins, right? So uh, in the U.S., we have a, a penny, like one cent. And then you have a nickel, that's five cents. Now, if you have 100 pennies, that's equal to $1. Okay, so that's a $1 bill. But we have other dollar bills, like $5 bills. And then, of course, you have $20 bills, et cetera, et cetera. So here, Bob has 126 bills, 126 pieces of paper made up of fives and tens, right? So he has fives and then he has $10 bills. Okay, so we're trying to determine how many of these bills are fives, all right? So he has fives and tens only. Okay, so uh, as I promised, I'm going to use algebra to figure this out. And algebra is awesome because uh, if you have an unknown value in your problem, you can simply assign a variable. And here, 
what we're looking for is how many fives does Bob have? So I'm thinking I'm just going to let the variable x represent the number of fives uh, that Bob uh, has here. Because if I can solve for the variable x, well, then I will have answered the question. All right, so let's go ahead and do that right now. So I'm going to let x equal the number of fives. Now, this is really important uh, because I'm not talking about the monetary value. I'm talking about the actual number of $5 bills he has, right? So if x is equal to 2, that means Bob has two $5 bills. Now, uh, we need to use the rest of the information in the problem because we, not only do we have fives, we also have tens, right? So the rest of the information in the problem, which I'm going to uh, need here in just one second, uh, is uh, about tens, right? Or we can uh, create an expression that represents the number of tens. So if x equals the number of fives that Bob, uh, Bob has, and Bob has 126 uh, bills made up of five fives and tens. Well, if he has uh, X number of fives, well, how many uh, uh, tens does he have? Well, it's going to be this expression right here, right? So if he has 126 bills total and he has X number of fives, well, if you take away the number of fives, then that number, okay? And remember, this is not the monetary value. It's how many actual $5 bills he has. And we subtract that, that uh, subtract that away from the 126 bills total. Well, that is the number of tens. Okay, so from an algebra standpoint, x right here uh, is going to uh, represent the number of fives, and 126 minus x is going to equal the number of tens that Bob has. Now, notice here, this is not a little trivial detail, that I have this difference in parentheses. Now, I could simply write this as 126 minus x. Technically, there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, for those of you that really want to understand algebra, anytime you're dealing with um, a sum or difference, anything that's being um, added or subtracted, just get in the habit of putting grouping symbols around that. That's really going to save you a lot of heartache when you uh, solve equations. Okay, so we have two variables. We have two variable expressions. We have one variable. So we have x. That's equal to the, that is uh uh, we're letting that equal to the number of fives. Boy, I had a tough time getting that out. And 126 uh, minus x in parentheses is the number of tenths. Well, it's fantastic. I have these uh, lovely variable expressions, but uh, we can't really do anything with this in terms of how do we solve for x unless we have an equation. So we're going to have to use the rest of the information that's in the problem, and that is this part right here. Okay, so this part of the problem is... Uh, kind of the key to solving the problem. So the total value is $840. Okay, so what does that mean? Well, it means that if you count up all the fives and plus all the tens, the monetary value of all of these, well, that's $840. So we can figure this out, um, and we can figure out what x is equal to by establishing this relationship right here. Okay, so if we take all of our fives, the number of fives, okay, and so this is the number of fives, we get that monetary value of it, and we add that to the number of tens we have in terms of the monetary value of it, that's $840. Now, how can we kind of really express this from an algebraic standpoint? Well, X, again, is what? That's the number of fives that we have. So a $5 bill is worth how much? Well, it's worth $5, right? So if I have 5x, this is the uh, monetary value of my fives. So if x is equal to 1, I have what? Well, I have, I have $5 in value. If x is equal to 2, I have what? I'm going to replace this x with 2. I have $10 in value. If x is equal to 3, I can plug that in right there for x. I have $15, right? So x, again, is the number of fives that I have. That times $5 is the monetary value of all the fives. Now, we can look at the tens in the same way. We have 126 minus x tens, right? So we set that up, and each one of these here is worth $10. So the monetary value of all the tens is this expression right here. So we know all of our fives in terms of what they're worth, plus all of our tens, the total value of all these bills is 840. Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. And if this does, all we need to do is solve for x. So we have a lovely 
linear equation. So we have 5x plus 10 times 126 minus x uh, is equal to 840. Now remember, I was talking about parentheses, right? So each one of these tens, uh, we have 126 minus x tens. If we didn't have these parentheses, you uh, you know could end up writing an expression like this. This is a very common mistake. So someone might think, well, I just need to take this 10 and multiply it by 126. That is not right. Okay, what we need to do here is apply the distributive property. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this equation for x. This is not going to be that difficult. So we have 5x plus 10 parentheses 126 minus x parentheses is equal to 840. Now, if you need help with this algebra here, I'm going to give you uh, some uh, specific suggestions in just one second, but I'm just going to assume that you understand how to solve basic linear equations. Okay, so 5x plus 10 times 126 minus x. First things we need to do here is the distributive property. So I need to take this 10 and multiply it by 126. 10 times 126 is 1260, and then 10 times this x right here is minus 10x. So that is our first step. And now our second step, and by the way, notice I'm just writing one step at a time, is to look for like terms. Okay, so 5x and negative 10x are like terms. In other words, they're the same variable. So we can add the coefficients. So that's 5 and negative 10. 5 plus negative 10 is negative 5x. Okay, so now I have uh, 1260 minus 5x or plus a negative 5x is equal to 840. Okay, so the next step here is to get all of our variables on one side and all of our numbers on the other. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 1260 from both sides of the equation. And when we do that and add down in a column manner, we're going to end up with negative 5x is equal to 840 minus 1260 is negative 420. All right, so we're almost there. So to solve for x, all we have to do is simply divide both sides of the equation by negative 5. So negative 420 divided by negative 5 is 84. Okay, so x is equal to 84. Now remember, x equals what? Well, x is equal to the number of fives. But let's suppose some of you out there are like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm not quite sure you did this right. Well, we can always check our answer. Okay, that's the great thing about algebra. If you have a solution, we can go back and uh, check to see if it is the proper solution. So let's go to take that step. But uh, before we do, let's take this step. And that is uh, having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I've been on YouTube for, well, I started my channel, I think, like 14 years ago. That's a long time ago. And uh, I really regret not posting more videos in the beginning. I kind of was off doing other things at the time. I just started my channel. I didn't do much with it. But maybe about seven years ago, I really started putting a lot of content. And, uh, you know, my uh, performance on YouTube or, you know, my you know, views and everything else really kind of skyrocketed. So, of course, that makes me very happy. But I share that with you as kind of an illustration of, of learning mathematics. Okay, if you do a little bit here, a little bit there, if you're trying to learn math, you're really not going to get farther. You know, and this is not only math, it's pretty much anything in life. If you truly want to learn something or improve in something, you really do have to uh, do two things. One, you have to put full immersion, a lot of a consistent effort, and you simply just need time to get better. Okay, and that's been my story on YouTube. But uh, my goal is really to try to teach math in a clear and understandable and interesting way. But I need your help to continue to reach as many people as possible on YouTube. And the best way to help me is to hit that subscribe button. And that helps me help others. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Now, uh, one thing here uh, for those of you that might be, uh, you know, a bit uh, confused about the algebra or maybe rusty on this stuff. You're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I was doing this stuff way back in 1972. I forgot all of this stuff. Well, I have a perfect uh, course for those of you that want to relearn mathematics, and that is called my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Matter of fact, I'm going to leave links to my main full math courses in the description of this video. That's where you're going to always find my best uh, instruction, my best material. But if you want to relearn mathematics, check out my Math Skill Rebuilder course here. I started with basic math, and then I get into a ton of algebra, geometry, and even some basic trigonometry, and even some probability and statistics. And if you need help 
with other courses like to say pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, et cetera, et cetera. Well, you can find links to those courses in the description as well. All right, so let's get back to this problem. So we solved the equation and x is equal to 84. So we're pretty happy about that. We're like, yay, we uh, solved the problem. But uh, did we do this right? Maybe you might have doubts. Well, let's go back and uh, make sure we understand what x is equal to. So remember, x was equal to the number of fives, right? So that's how many $5 bills we have. So if we have 84 fives, okay, 84 total $5 bills, and we have 126 bills total. Well, if x is equal to 84, how many tens uh, do we have? Well, it's going to be 126 minus 84, so we have 42 tens. So you can kind of figure out, okay, this is how many tens we have. We have uh, 84 uh, fives, and we have 42 tens. But really, uh, the best way to uh, solve this problem is to go back to the equation, or to check the solution, rather. So if x is equal to 84, that's how many fives we have. So we can just plug in right here $5 times how many $5 bills we have, right? That's going to be the monetary value of our 5. So that would be 5 times 84 plus $10, right? The $10 of value times how many $10 bills we have. So how many $10 bills do we have? Well, it's going to be 126 minus X. Of course, we already figured that out. That's 42. So when we plug in uh, all these X's, when we replace uh, the X's with 40 or 84, excuse me, we're going to get the following. So 5 times 84 right here is 420. 10 times 126 minus 84. 126 minus 84 is 42. So 10 times 42 is 420. 420 plus 420 is $840. Okay, so here again, you know, when you're solving a math word problem, uh, almost always you can check your solution. And one of the uh, Big tip that I have for those of you that are still math students. Unfortunately, some of you still have to take math exams, but here is a great little tip. Never, ever, ever turn in your math test early, okay? So even if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I was able to finish my hour-long test in uh, 30 minutes. Well, don't just turn in your test and then go on to your cell phone and start reading your text messages. What you want to do is use that balance of time to go back and check your work. All right, so especially if you're taking like an algebra test or whatnot, you can go back and check your solutions. So again, use your time wisely. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.